Good morning. It's good to be in God's house. And it's good to be together with God's people on a Sunday morning, able to worship God together, even though we're not here, even though we're social distancing, even though we're, you know, miles, for some of us, apart. We're together. We're together as a body. We're together as a people of God. And, and, and the prayer is, and, and, and the news, as they're starting to say, let a little bit out, let a little bit, is that at some point, there's going to be a return. There's going to be a time when we get to gather together as God's people. And I can't wait for that. You're talking about a day uh, of, of celebration, a day of worship, when we, as a people of God, can, can reunite as, as, as a church family in this tool. That's what this building is, a tool. And worship God together as his, as his kids, as his people. And, and, and so it's, it's going to be an opportunity. So at some point, we're going to be able to resume. And, and you know, whatever, and, and we're going to call it, I've heard so many say, it's a new normal. And, and what that new normal is going to look like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the, the you know, if it's going to be a little bit of the old and a little bit of the new or how the new normal is going to be. I'm, I'm not sure what that, 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 you know, after we resume, what normality is going to look like. And, 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 but I think a key factor in what that's going to look like is what we look like today. You see, I think this journey that you and I are on is such a key and an important uh, part. You know, this, this is a, an incredible time, if you would, in our life. You say, how is it an incredible? You know, there's so many opportunities that are out there, so many opportunities that we're being afforded, so many times that we're seeing God's hand and God move and, and, and God stir and people are getting excited, I think, about the things of God that maybe that they weren't there. Maybe maybe they found themselves in a rut and, or, or a time of, 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 you know, just not being focused. Maybe they, they had lost focus and, and this is a time of focus. This is a time of return. This is a time of opportunity that I believe God has laid at our doorstep. And so how the new normal is going to look, how the after, you know, the, the virus, if you would, is going to be, is going to really depend on what's going on with me right here, right now. This part of my journey. This part of my life, if you would, that, that I'm going through. And, you know, when you, when you think about it, the, the normal right now, and it's, and it's starting to lift in some places, but it's a stay at home. It's a shelter at place. And when you think about that, I'm thankful that I don't live in a place. I'm thankful God allows me to be a country boy. And I can live kind of out on the farm, if you would. And, and have some, some freedoms out there where I can go out and just, just, just you know, check to see if a tree has a new bud on it or something, you know? Uh, and, you know, can get out. I can't imagine living in a place like New York City. I can't imagine, you know, being cooped up in a small apartment and not being able to leave, not being able to... To, to smell the fresh, you know, just to get out and so forth. You know, it, it would almost be like a cage. And, and, and I can't fathom that, of being in that cage. And yet there's those that, that you know, have been quarantined on boats that can't leave the room. Those in the city can't get out of their apartments and their houses and so forth. And, and, and they can't leave. And so it's almost like they're in a cage, if you would. And, and, and those cages, I know what it would do for me. It would stress me out. I'm talking mess me up. I, I don't like to be confined. And yet that's exactly what they're having to deal with. And, and, and when you think about that, those cages, if you would, and, and, and confining somebody, I, as I said, I know how I would react. It would stress me out. Cages 
tend to do that. Cages tend to, to, to hold you, to bind you, to keep you from being all that God wants you to be. You see, on the back side of this, on the, uh, and, and, and down the road, if you would, when, when, when we get through this, you know, how, I, how, how that new normal, you know, and, and what God's going to do in my life, and all, it depends on how I'm responding right now, if you would, in my cage, in my, you know, how, how, how I get through what I'm dealing with. You know, the, when, when, when you think about the opportunities that I think, as I shared earlier, that, that God has for us, I get that God never wastes an opportunity in my life. He allows things in my life and your life so that he can bring us to a different place or he can, he can encourage us or he can discipline us or, or he can, you know, he allows things to happen. He never wastes an opportunity if you would. He, he never misses those. And, and, I, and I got to thinking about that. I'm thinking, you know, the devil, the devil hadn't missed this either. The devil hadn't missed this opportunity. Rahm Emanuel, the big Democrat guy, he made a statement. And, and, and one of the things that they make sure that, that they do in a political atmosphere, if you would, is that in the, the statement that, that, that he made was never let a crisis go to waste. Never let a crisis go to waste. You know, they can spin it, stir it, do whatever they want to do so that they can get some air time so they can get whatever. And so never let a crisis go to waste. Don't you think for one second that the devil has not left or has let this crisis go to waste. He's going to use it. He's going to stir it. He's going to mess with us every chance he gets. Ultimately, to mess me up in the here and now and down the road. You know, do what he can do in my life right here, right now. Stress me out because of all that's going on. Somebody want to get in the boat with me? Say amen. You know, you think about it. Because of all this going on, stress me out. And, 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 and how I respond to what's going on is, is how I'm going to deal with my new normal when, when we get there. i got to get through this first. David, in Psalm 4, said this. I want to read this to you. He said, hear me. When I call, oh God of my righteousness, you, you, he says, have relieved me in my distress. Guys, let's be honest and be real for just a moment. There are so many of us, so many of us that have had to deal with this with this mess and this chaos and this craziness and this uncertainty and the unknowns. And if we're honest, if we're honest, we probably a lot of us would be in this boat. It has stressed us, kind of like David. Man, we are distressed about Corona, about the COVID-19, about the virus, about, you know, some of them hurt the Rona, whatever. We're stressed out about it. We see what everybody's saying. We see, you know, and, and, and I've seen, I've got friends of mine that have, I mean, literally freaked out because of this and, and stressed over it to the point of tears, to the point of, of letting fear just completely win. God's, here, here's truth here. God's willing to come alongside of us. He's willing to be right there in this battle with us. He's willing to fight with us. He's willing to make sure that we get through this without any questions, any doubts. He will be there. The Bible says he, he won't forsake us. He won't leave us. He will be there for us. And so if, if my Jesus is going to walk with me and, 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 and yet all that I see, all that I hear, all of what's going on, you know, the stress, the stress, it can be like a cage. It can hinder me from what God wants.
wants to do in my life. It can hinder me from, from, from the positives that God wants to, 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 to happen in my life. You see, guys, I believe this. I believe this with all of my heart. When we get to the new normal, and it's coming, when we get to the, the day down the road, when we all get together, you know, we can look, we'll be able to look back and we'll be able to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll be able to see the good that's come out of it. You see, I believe some good has come out of it. I believe there's some of the people of God that are getting serious about worshiping God again, getting serious about the Word of God again, getting serious and, you know, willing to make that commitment and, and, and say, God, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be faithful. When I get a chance, God, I'm coming back. And see, guys, I also believe in that same breath. I have to, I have to, to know this, that there's going to be some bad out of it. There's going to be somebody that's messed up in their cage of stress, if you would. And they're stuck in that cage of, because, because they didn't deal with this good. You know, they begin to question, God, God, why are you allowing this? Why is this happening, this happening, this happening? They don't trust God anymore. And, and, and they're going to walk away from God because of what happened in the middle of this craziness. They got messed up and stuck in their cage. David said this, guys. David says, hear me when I call, oh God. Hear me, God. Please. He says, oh God of my righteousness, hear me. He says, you have been there for me. You have relieved me in my distress, in my, in my, in my craziness, in my chaos, in my pains, in my uncertainties. You have taken care of me. You have been there for me. He's crying out to God. He's begging God. He's like, God, please hear me. Hear me, oh God. I'm in the middle of this cage of stress. I'm in the middle of, of, of 2020. It's been a horrible year, God. It's been crazy. There's been this, this, this. This pandemic, this disease, the, the, the deaths, the sickness. God, hear me. I'm in this cage of stress. You see, guys, I wish this church was full today because I believe there'd be a lot of people waiting, nodding their heads up and down, a lot of people who could understand, a lot of people who say, get me, I'm in that boat, preacher. I'm there. I'm struggling with stress because of what's going on around me. I'm struggling with stress. David says, God, hear me. Hear me in my distress. Hear me in my pain. The psalmist said this in Psalm 50. In verse 15, I want, I want to read this to you guys because it is so awesome. God's promise. God says, call upon me in the day of trouble. Psalm 50 and verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Here in the middle of my craziness, here in the middle of my stress, in the middle of my pandemic, in the middle of all of my cage of stress, here's what God says. God says, call on me. Call on me and I will deliver you. I will deliver you. What a promise from God. And you know, in Psalm 18 and verse 6, David gets even more personal in his plea. He says this, Psalm 18 and verse 6, he says, In my distress, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. I said, God, hear my cry. In my distress, he said, I called upon God. And he said, and, and cried out to my God. Man, it was difficult. It was distress. It was this. You know, all of what we're going through, all of what we're dealing with. And David said, I cried out to my God, and he heard me. He heard my voice from 
his temple and my cry came before him even to his ears. I love that. David said in the middle of what was going on in my life, I said, Jesus, I need you. And he heard me. He heard my cry. He heard my cry. You need to hear this church. You need to hear this child of God. You need to hear this Christian. You need to hear this truth tonight that God loves you. And when you cry out to God, God hears you and God will answer you. Hear that truth. David said, I cried out to my God and he heard me. He heard my voice. He heard me. The psalmist says in Psalm 145, in verse number 18, 145, in verse 18, it says, The Lord is near. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near. He's near. He knows what you're going through. He knows the difficulties. He knows the pressure. He knows the distress. He knows the pains and the sufferings. He knows this stuff, guys. And he is near to all of those, the Bible says, who will call upon him. Him. You see, I'm not making a lot of this stress you're under. I'm not making light of, uh, you know, those that maybe have been laid off or those that have maybe been, you know, sick or that you hadn't been able to do this or you hadn't been able to do that. Or I'm not making light of that. I, I just want you to hear this truth that God says, God says, not Ken says, God says the Lord is near. The Lord is near to all of those who call upon him. To all of those who call upon him. I get it. I get it that the craziness. We've never walked this journey before. But he knew we were going to walk this journey. Let me tell you something, church. Let me tell you something. Ken, I'm going to speak to Ken too right now. Because here's truth. You know, stress it new. This isn't new. You know, David, David going through what David went through. You know, and this is, this is at the time that we're reading about in chapter 4. If you back up into chapter number 3, you see it talks about that this is a time of, of, of David's son, Absalom. And it's David's son who rebelled against his dad. He rebelled against his dad being king and he tried to overthrow one to kill his dad. David has to literally run for his life, literally to, uh, you know, flee for his life. And, and, and in chapter 3, it talks about that. He says in verse 5, I lay down and slept. He says, I awoke. He says, for the Lord sustained me. How many of you, how many of you can say amen to that? The Lord sustained David in the middle of this chaos, in the middle of this craziness. He, he sustained him, he said. He says, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me. He said, when everything is crashing in on me, everything is coming against me, he said, I'm not going to be afraid because I know who's got my back. I know who's taking care of me. I know who's there for me. He's never failed me. He's not going to start today, and he won't start tomorrow, bless God. He said, arise, oh, my Lord. He said, save me, oh, my God. For you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You've broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to, to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. David said, God, I'm not scared of my chaos. Let them come against me. I know you're there for me. I know you'll take care of me. You see, guys, you see why it's so important that in the middle of this chaos, in the middle of this stress that we're going through, it's real. Your distress, it's real. It's, it's, everybody's dealing with it. 
Nothing new. David dealt with it. David said this, though, guys. He said, it's not going to get me. It's not going to hinder me from being who God wants me to be. You see why Satan's going to use this? You see why Satan's not wasting a crisis? Because he wants to hinder you from moving forward with God. He wants to hinder you. He wants it to be on the bad side instead of the good side. He wants to do whatever it takes. He's not going to waste a pandemic. He's not going to waste a, a, a can't go to church. He's not, he's not going to waste this. I'm telling you. If you think he is, you're wrong. You know, he's going to use every opportunity he got that he has to get to us. That he, every opportunity. But here's what you need to see. In Psalm 121 and in verse 1, it says, where does my help come from? Where does my help come from? He asked that question. From whence comes my help? Verse 2, it says this. It says, my help, it didn't come from the hills. It didn't come from, from CNN or ABC or Fox News. That's not where my help comes from. My help, he says, comes from the Lord. From the Lord. That's who helps me, he says. Guys, can, I, can, 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 can we get real just for a minute? Jesus says this in Matthew chapter number 11 in verse 28. I want to I finish with that verse. Here's what Jesus says. Hey, Ken, in the middle of your stress, in the middle of your craziness, in the middle of your chaos, hey, Oakview, in the middle of your craziness, in the middle of your stress, I know it's a cage of stress. I know the devil's working overtime to try to get you to doubt God, to question God, to doubt God's authority and God's ability. I get what he's doing in your stress. I know he wants to keep you in that stress. But here's, here's what Jesus says to that, Ken. Here's what Jesus says to that Oakview. Come unto me. All of you who are who labor and are heavy laden. And you know what he says? He said, I'll give you rest. Let me ask you a question. And just be honest, be real. How many of you have lost sleep? Because of what's going on. You lay down and, and, and you can't turn it off. You're thinking about this. You're thinking about that. You're thinking about you know all that's going on. Here's what Jesus has come unto me. All of you that in the middle of this craziness. If you'll just seek me. If, you know the Bible says if we seek him we'll find him. He says come unto me. If he didn't mean it he wouldn't have said it. If he couldn't do anything about your stress, he wouldn't have said, come to me. And yet he says, come to me. Bring it all. I'm good with it. Bring all your baggage. Bring all of your pains. Bring all of your uncertainties. Bring everything that you have. And he says, I will give you rest. Because truth is, you hadn't been able to let it go. You hadn't been able to, 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 to deal with it very good. And guys, here's the truth. We're going to get through this. And how it affects me right now is going to, is going to be so vital as to what it's going to do down the road. Let me go back to David for just a minute. Because I want to read you something. In chapter 4 and verse number 8, David says this. Remember chapter 4, verse 1. He says, I cried. Hear me when I call, O oh my God of righteousness. He says, you have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. He's like, I'm in the middle of this craziness. And he says, he cries out. He says, God, help. Help. Jesus, I know you said all of you that are struggling, all of you in the, in the middle of this stress situation. He says, if you'll bring it to me, I'll give you rest is what Jesus promised Matthew in Matthew so chapter 4 verse 8 here's what he says 
He says, I will both lie down in peace and I will sleep. This is David. In the middle of the Absalom rebellion, in the middle of the craziness, in the middle of the stress of what was going on in his life, he says, I'm going to lay down and I'm going to sleep. I'm going to lay down in peace and I'm going to sleep. And here's why. Here's why. Here's what it says. He says, for you, he says, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. He's like, God, I know you've got this. I know you've got my back. I realize my chaos is real. I realize my stress is real. But guys, here's the here's truth. In the middle of your stress, God says, let me give you peace. Let me fix it for you. Let me bring rest into your chaos. Let me bring rest into your, into your distress and stress. You don't have to stay there. <coughs> Let me fix it. What a promise. What a truth. In the middle of our craziness, God's like, I got this. David's like, for you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. I'm going to ask Margaret to come. I ask our musicians to come. And as they come today, I want you to, I want you to hear this. Guys, I want you to hear Jesus again. Jesus says, come unto me, all of you who labor, all of you who are heavy laden, all of you who are in that cage of stress, a cage of craziness. You know, if it isn't the disease stretched out, it's work stretched out. There's stress everywhere. And that's not where God intends for you to hang out. So as your heads are bowed, and your eyes are closed. Would you just would you just cry out to him? He hears your cry, remember? He hears your cry. Would you just cry out to Jesus? He can fix this. He can fix.
become needy, become hurting, full of baggage, full of our cage of stress and the craziness. Because you don't, you don't intend to leave us in that place of stress. You intend, Jesus, to bring us hope, peace and comfort, rest from my craziness. Whatever stresses me out, rest from it. Peace and comfort, you bring that. So, Lord, we don't look to the hills. Because that's not where our help comes from. We don't look to the government because that's not where our help comes from. We don't look to even family because that's not where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. And we stand on that today and we declare that today that we come, Jesus, we come knowing that you can fix this, that you can bring peace to our stress and our craziness. So we come. And as we come, we say, wow, that we're blown away with your willingness. Your invitation today to come. Lord, I pray for that one that maybe is watching this video that does not have a relationship with you, Lord. That doesn't know you as Lord and Savior like, like, like I do, Lord. Doesn't, doesn't have that hope that I have. That in the middle of my craziness, that I can lay down at night. And I sleep because of your peace. like David saying my Jesus brings that for me and Lord they don't have that and I pray Lord that they would they would seek you they would cry out to you in the middle of their of, of, of literally their, their deadness and their sin and their craziness and, and, and all that's going on in their life and they would cry out to you Jesus what a simple cry God help me I need you I need you, Jesus. I need you to save me. I need you to forgive me. I need you. I need you. See, guys, that's a cry he hears. I need you. So, Lord, we come today thanking you that we're not leaving the way we walked in. Because our help comes from the Lord. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for anointing and speaking to our hearts today.